my name is Amy. I was 15 when I found out I was pregnant, but I didn't really ever think that it would happen to me. He could get so many more girls pregnant if he wanted, and he could turn around to them and do what he's done with me, say, I don't want nothing to do with it. I don't think she really realises how serious it is and how hard it is. It's really painful. My bump feels really tight now and solid like a brick. How did my life get so complicated? <laughs> Amy is 16 and three months pregnant. She's an only child and lives with Mum Sally in Dunfermline, near Edinburgh. It's your first Christmas, so there you would have been three months old. Three months old and I'm the size of your whole body. Look, I've got a double chin. Yeah? I've got a double chin at three months. So if I had to be totally 100% honest, it's not something you wish for your 15-year-old your to be as pregnant. I'm going to be a mum at, at 15. You don't want that for your child. But it's there, it's happened. I was with a boy and I felt like I loved him and I thought we were going to last and nothing ever was going to happen that would be bad. I fell pregnant probably about when we'd been together a month and a half. Well, we weren't actually using any contraception. It's like you never ever really think, oh, I'm going to be pregnant. So I phoned him. And I said, I'm pregnant, and he, <laughs> he was shocked, and he was like, I don't want it. Often is the case, the woman is left with a child, and the biological fathers or whatever can walk away if they, if they want to. You know, so, yeah, I'm quite angry about it. He knows that's his child and that, but I don't think he wants to accept it's his child. Because I do think that every single child deserves to know their daddy, even though some daddies don't deserve to know their children. But I would still like it to know its biological father. She's always had a boyfriend. She had to have a boy. And I said, you don't have to have a boyfriend. Amy could go with someone and, oh, two weeks later, it's a new one, and I couldn't keep up. If I didn't have a boyfriend, I'd just feel, like, lonely. I think security could be the reason why I like a boyfriend. In fact, I think it is. Early in her pregnancy, Amy met her current boyfriend, Daniel. He lives six miles away with his parents, but visits Amy every day. Remember, I meet him for two. I thought, like, because I was pregnant, I wouldn't get anybody else, or, like, who's going to want to be with somebody that's got a child? But He's really seems so different. I know. I know you're probably thinking I'm just saying that, but no, they're not. Daniel's five years older than Amy, and at 21, he's hoping to become an apprentice plumber. I met Daniel on Bebo, and I was just randomly started talking, but all my Bebo said that I was pregnant, so he already knew I was pregnant. Oh, I knew straight away that she was pregnant. It didn't really bother me. I told her that I wasn't happy how she'd been treated and how her ex was, like, just left. It takes a boy to make a baby, but it takes a man to bring one up. So most of the boys should just man up and do what they need to do to help as much as they can. How would I hold a baby? To Ken, I told it, like, support its bum and then support its head. But again, that's how I would hold it. It'll come naturally. Might not come naturally to Daniel, because he's a bit... Oh. Amy! <laughs> that is so rude. <laughs> he supports you so nicely. Amy and Daniel have only been seeing each other for six weeks. I am Dad. I can feel it, like, yeah. about here, well, properly. But you felt it before. No, but I want to feel like a proper kick. Well, figure out if it's going to be a wee football player. Uh, if it's a wee boy, even if it's a wee girl. Daniel's in Amy's life now, and I just I love him to bits now. You know, and I couldn't ask for a better, a better daddy for, for the baby. Taking on Amy's unborn child has caused problems for Daniel. A lot of people thought that I, it was me personally that got Amy pregnant. 
when she was 15, and I was like, kind of getting, got made out to be a paedophile, and, but she was already pregnant. The, the fact is, is Amy's 16, I'm 21, and she's pregnant, it's not mine, but I'm going to be the dad. There's my dad, though. Having a father figure in her child's life is important to Amy. She left her dad behind in Zimbabwe when she moved to the UK with her mum. I've not seen him in five years, so I really miss him. It's important for my baby to have a mum and dad because since I've not had my dad here, it's like you really miss that kind of male figure around. You're coming in the delivery room. Uh, you will bond. Like it's, it's scary. It actually, it scares me the fact that if, what if I didn't bond this baby, or what if every time I went to pick the baby up, it cried. I will like you. Stop saying it won't. But so stop. I'll try my hardest, eh? But obviously, it's something you can't even mm. help thinking about. To help Daniel feel involved with her pregnancy, Amy is taking him along to her twenty-week scan. Oh, I'm desperate. If I don't find the sex out, then I'll probably cry. I've been saying to everybody that I'd love a wee boy and that. So if I was like to be a wee girl, I'd still be so happy, but I'll feel bad because I've been saying I want a boy, and if it's a girl, I just feel so guilty that I've been saying that I want either boy. Right, are we going? Amy's already decided on names. Gregor for a boy and Brooke for a girl. I hope you get what you wish for, eh? Go on. We'll see you in a bit. Good luck, Daniel. Bye. Fingers crossed that everything's OK with the baby and everything's going as it should, because it's not just about finding out what sex the, ch what sex the baby is. The majority of teen mums find out the sex of their baby at the 20-week scan. <laughs> I'm so happy. <laughs> To be boy, <laughs> and it doesn't. It, by the way, it don't start crying. I was like, "Mom, don't cry." I'm so happy to be boy. I'm over the moon. I tell you, you're very boy. I knew. I had the feeling. Oh, oh, I'm so happy. Daniel, did you cry? No, I've got sore cheeks to smile and though, like. We Gregor doesn't stop moving at all, by the way. I'm so happy. I knew I'd be a boy. I knew it. The news that she's having a boy has made Amy think about how she would tell the biological father when the baby is born. Smells good. So, like, see when I go into labour, are we going to phone him and, like, the biological dad would say, yeah, Amy's gone into labour and that, just to let you know. When you go into labour, what do you tell him? We'll be too busy, we won't be any time to think about him anyway. When Gregor's born, we can tell him yeah, that day, because it's only fair, really. With regards Amy and the biological father, I think you should just leave him alone. That I don't think she should keep trying and being kept being rejected. There's no one likes rejection. If she's upset, Greg is going to be upset. Do you know what I mean? She's, she's got hard times ahead. You know, things aren't easy when you when you're bringing up a child. So she needs to focus on Gregor. Amy wants to make sure Daniel understands why she plans to tell the biological father. Would you look scared? <laughs> I don't know what you can ask me. When, like, the baby's born, how do you feel about, like, obviously I'm going to have to text the biological father and say he's born, but how are you going to feel about that? Is that going to make you feel upset or...? It won't bother me. And then how would you feel if he wanted to come see? I wouldn't have been anywhere near it. Wait. I don't want to see him. 
And he's not spoke, not done anything for nine months, not even asked her how she is. But if he thinks he can just walk back in and get what he wants, he's got another thing coming. In Scotland, Amy's in the final stages of her pregnancy. My bump feels really tight now and solid like a brick. It gets sore up here. It's really painful, like underneath my ribs. And then, like, down here, it feels really heavy and it's feeling too tight. Only eight weeks left, <laughs> thank God. Amy has also developed anemia, a lack of red blood cells in the body which causes unusual tiredness. So, like, I've been put on tablets to help with it. They make me feel quite sick sometimes. It's like constantly feeling tired. You feel like I might as well be in a wheelchair or something like that because you can't move or anything. I thought being pregnant it's just nine months, the baby's in your stomach, nothing complicated. I didn't expect it to be like this. She's still focused on her pregnancy, but in roughly eight weeks' time, Amy will have to cope with childbirth. She looks like an old granny. <laughs> <laughs> I'm nervous about the birth. I'm not even bothered about the birth, so as, I'm just going to take games with me and stuff to play. I wouldn't say I'm scared for the birth that's going to happen. I still don't think it's really hit me properly yet. Amy was in labour for seven hours. I remember saying during the labour, I don't want to do this anymore, I want to go home. I didn't know how to take it, seeing her like screaming. It's hard to see anyone in that pain and not being able to do anything about it. When I got one of the really big contractions, it was like, the pain was quite severe. I was panicking, that's what was making them more sore. There was no chance I would have been able to play board games, cards, even eat anything. Daniel was with Amy during her labour and Gregor's birth. All the way up to the labour, I was like, I'll be fine. I'm not that type of person. The minute I saw him, I just couldn't stop myself crying. I am fell in love with him straight away. <gasps> Gregor is nearly three weeks old, and fortunately, Mum Sally is sharing the baby care. There's shed loads of work when there's a little baby. If I had no support at all, I don't think I'd be able to cope. Just do that for now. My mum does 60% and I do 40% of the hard stuff. I think I do a lot, but I don't mind doing it. He's my grandchild, so I'll do whatever. Looking at Amy, she's still a child. As planned, Amy got in touch with the biological father of her child. The day after Gregor was born, I contacted the biological father and I texted him and um, I got no reply or anything. So now I've given up trying. So he's just not interested at all. You know, so Gregor doesn't deserve that, you know. He's got a daddy and he's got family, so... Just because I'm not his biological dad doesn't mean I love him any differently or anything like that. He's still my wee boy. Hi. I am very proud of myself. <laughs> but I'm more proud of the people that have helped me through it because I wouldn't have been able to do it without everybody else helping me. I love being a mum. <laughs>